Welcome to Swarm Solutions. Today we're looking at another one of those guns that's uh, it's a very small company but does incredibly uh, nice work. It was a company that I've been aware of for quite some time, but I had not had an opportunity to review any of their rifles. I had called several times. They actually are a, Houston, or a Texas-based company out of San Antonio. I was never able to get with anybody who could get me a gun to review. Uh, however, one of our viewers uh, was very anxious to, to get a review of this rifle, so he was kind enough to send me one. Uh, which he did, uh, and thank again, thank him. Uh, you know, so he is for his uh, his patience over the last couple months. The, the gun that we have here is from Sons of Liberty Gunworks out of San Antonio, Texas. Now, this is a company again which uh, has been known for making uh, you know quality rifles, uh, but they sort of passed under my radar because I didn't really know who they were. Uh, I I actually got the gun, I shot the gun first, and then I made contact again with uh, with Sons of Liberty and talked to one of the the founders. His name was Mike Bilski. And uh, I proceeded to have a long conversation with them because, again, I want to know, you know, what makes your gun different from anybody else's? Because, you know, as I said, here in Houston, or here in Texas, that is, you have a few, you have a few companies out there that are making really good uh, small runs of guns. You know, these guys evolve and so forth. So when I talked to him, uh, I asked him, you know, I asked Mike, I said, what, what makes your gun different from anybody else's? And he says, uh, for the most part, the parts that you see here are all manufactured not so much by them, but all per their drawings. So basically you have everything for the most part that is not made in-house, but it's made to their drawings. And in fact, for the most part, the only parts that really weren't were like the pistol grip and the, and the stock, which were all uh, B5, um, which is the funny thing that I told him. The only thing I really, the only real critique I had on his gun was the fact that I prefer Mad the Magpul Myad grip in the CTR stock, but again, that has nothing to do with the quality of the gun. It's just was with a preference. So um, I had asked him, you know, what are some of the unique aspects? He goes, well, first off, we build every single rifle as if it's to be suppressed. Out of being, you know, being a Texas-based company where we're NFA friendly and gun friendly here, suppressors are not uncommon at all here in the state of Texas. So the way that they balance their gas system, meaning the way they have their gas port, their their uh, mid-length gas system on here, their buffer, uh, their their recoil spring, the way all this works together, it's in an, it's in a perfect spot where you could just throw a can on here and it would work just as well with or without. So another aspect of it was these parts again are are assembled in a way where they're custom fit. For instance. You would not be able just to slide a barrel into this upper receiver. You'd already have to heat up this upper receiver so you'd be able to slide the barrel into uh, the upper receiver. So these parts are all very, 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 very tightly fitted. And the fundamentals and how they work, uh, he basically said, was also it was attention made to each cycle of operations, all the parts that worked into it, and you know their trigger. They use a nick uh, nickel Teflon plated trigger, which they feel adds to the accuracy as well. Um, the barrel also, this was another important issue for as far as I was concerned. Most of you guys know that I prefer drilled and pin barrels. Uh, any, any gun to be used in the real world, in my opinion, has to have a drilled and pin barrel. So when I asked, uh, Mike about this, he had said, well, they dimple all their barrels. So when they install the, the, the set screws, the dog nose on there, it goes up into the, into the, into the dimple and there's no way for this gas block to move forward. Also, a lot of additional detail, he said, is, is taken into the gas block itself and the way that it fits over the barrel so you don't have any gas leakage. Another interesting aspect about it was he said that we have a 100% no BS lifetime warranty. He basically said if anything happens to the rifle, regardless of what it is, they will replace it. He's had people where they've had fires in their houses. He's replaced, you know, you know, the gun. He's had people who have used the guns in actual self-defense situations, and he's loaned them rifles uh, while the guns were in evidence. Um, you know, guns that have been, even guns that have been misused. So he probably has one of the most forgiving warranties that are probably in the industry. So I asked him a little bit about their production rate, and he says, well, we probably make around 15,000 guns a year. And he goes, right now with the back orders that have been going on for quite some time, there are over 50,000 guns back ordered, uh, which means what distributors have put in for, you know, for, you know, for orders. But their capacity is 15,000, and they keep going up uh, every year. So the company was a, little, was a lot larger of a player than I had thought. Um, and looking at the overall quality of, of the rifle for as far as the fit and finish, uh, it, it was very, very impressive. This rifle is what they refer to as their M476, uh, you know, 1776, uh, Sons of Liberty, uh, so that's where sort of that word comes from. The caliber, 5.56 millimeter. Now looking at the barrel, 16 inch 4150 chrome molly vanadium. You have a uh, six lines of grooves with a right hand twist, one half by 28 threads. 
Now, this adapter on here is relatively interesting. This is a, a Sandman Dead Air, or they call it the uh, Sons of Liberty Knox Flash Suppressor uh, Muzzle Brake Combo. You do have three top notches on here where you have gas escapes from the top. Then you have the, the prongs on here for flash. Now, of course, this is dedicated to a Sandman type suppressor. Um, again, if this was mine, this would have come right off and I would have put an ASR mount for a Silencer Co. Or, or one of my LMTs, or I would have put something on it for one of my OSS suppressors. Um, so, but this is this is the way that it comes. Now, all the barrels are magnetic particle and proof testing, meaning they fire at 7,000 PSI proof cartridge, and then they magnetic particle inspect it to be sure that there's no stress fractures. They go with a, Q, a QPQ finish, which is very much like that of a nitride type finish. Low profile gas block. And this is also put on with set screws. And you do have also a dog nose in there, as we said, for as far as it not coming coming loose. You have a 15 inch handguard on here, which is also uh, Sons of Liberty. And in fact, they even call it their uh, M76. As you can see, we have uh, all the, the notches on here for uh, M lock. And we have a lot of material that's removed from here to maintain light weight, full 1913 rail on the top. Now we'll take a look at the lower receiver. We're gonna go over the parts that are in that. Okay, this is where we get a little bit more interesting too, some other parts that are relatively unique. Again, we have the B5 stock on here, which is like a SOCOM stock. We're gonna remove this. We have on here a nine position receiver extension. This receiver extension is the same diameter and length of that of the Voltor A5. So when we pull out the buffer, we'll see this is a H2 type buffer. Now, this is something when I talked to uh, the guys over Sons of Liberty, they felt very, very strongly that this was, they felt this is one of the most important improvements that uh, this gun's gone through in a long time. So he is a real big uh, proponent of the A5 buffer system. They also stake with a Battle Arms Development receiver extension nut, and they stake it in three positions. Again, we have this, uh, yeah, the B5 Systems pistol grip. Again, this is not one of my favorite parts. Uh, I prefer the Magpul Nyad pictograms on here. When you look in the inside, you'll see that we have the open shelf in here. So any of you guys who have any registered, uh, you know, the uh, lightning links, you'd be able to put that in there with no problem uh, to be able to use your legally owned uh, lightning link. You have a nickel boron hammer trigger mechanism on here. Uh, standard uh, front and rear takedown pins, standard magazine release. You notice that we do have an extended uh, trigger guard on here. You flip it over which is basically a mil-spec safety, mil-spec ping-pong paddle. And it's got their Sons of Liberty Gunworks uh, logo on the left-hand side. So you can definitely see that there's some of their own uh, parts on here as well. Now again, when we say A5, this is not a Voltor A5. This is the same length and diameters, but this is their own. This is a Voltor uh, buffer, but nine positions instead of six. So this is definitely probably one of the, you know, the most you know, even, even Voltor, they only have seven positions on this. These guys got a full nine. Next is the upper receiver. And we have an OEM part on here. This is a Radian Raptor, uh, one of their charging handles. Again, excellent charging handle. It's great for being able to grasp on both the right and the left-hand side. Uh, excellent charging handle. Bolt carrier group, standard mil spec bolt carrier group that comes from. Uh, in fact, we we're talking about the you know some of the suppliers for some of these things here. This is this company who provides this to these guys is the same one who provides to the U.S. government for most of the OEM companies, including Colt and FN and others. So you're looking at an excellent quality uh, bolt carrier group, chrome plated inside. You get a chrome plated carrier key, mag particle and proof tested bolt. Um, so you're looking at a Carpenter 150. So you're looking at a good mil spec bolt carrier group. And looking at your upper receiver, you have a good mil spec upper receiver. You do have M4 feed ramps. You have your charging, your uh, forward assist on here. Um, but overall, the fit and finish, the uh, the finish on here is quite nice as well. Unlike what you see with a lot of the rifles that are out today, you have this bright, shiny, uh, like high gloss type black finish. This is more of a matte finish. It appears as though that uh, this was bead blasted quite a bit more to give you that more of that dull feeling. Uh, the finish is put on here extremely well. Now, the optic that this customer decided to put on here was uh, one of the ACOGs, a 3 to 5 by 35. It's green, which I absolutely love green. Now, a lot of people talk about these and they say, are ACOGs still relevant with all the LPVOs that are out in the market today? And I have to say to them, absolutely they're relevant. Because you're looking at a, uh, you're looking at a 
optic that is manufactured out of the same material that the rifle is, 775 T6 aircraft grade aluminum. They're, um, I seen some of these when I was over in Afghanistan that were in IED uh, explosions. And the rifles are blown apart, but these damn optics are still uh, are still intact. Uh, they're, they're, they're literally bomb proof. Now, this is one of their longer ones because it's the three. It's not the standard, um, the military one where you do have the, you do have the fiber optic. The only problem with the fiber optic is because you have so much fiber optic, if you're in a bright sunny day, you literally can get a washout on your on your reticle because it is just so bright. In fact, you'll see me uh, in the shooting footage where I put my hand over the top because it was letting so much light in that I couldn't see the fine uh, details in the target to try to get a good group with it. So I did have to cover that up. Now this does have an MRO on the back. Um, again, you're looking for sighted in probably 100, this was sighted in for 100 yards. And then, of course, this was probably sighted in for 25. The battery was out on this one, so I didn't really, I didn't really use this one at all. Uh, there were no, uh, no sights. This is exactly the way that it was provided to me. Let's take this one out to the range, and we're going to see how it shoots.
The best group that was fired with this was with uh, Black Hills Mark 262, 77 grain OTM ammunition at 0.51 inches. Now, for as far as firing was concerned, we fired. Uh, I only fired about 250 rounds out of this because, again, this was a, this was one of our viewers' guns, and I'm not gonna, you know, I'm not gonna run, you know, thousand rounds through his rifle, 500 rounds through his rifle. But uh, we shot 200 rounds of the Remington 62 grain uh, OTM match ammunition and 50 rounds of the Black Hills. For as far as recoil was concerned, it was absolutely gorgeous. Um, you'll see from the video where we were shooting at our challenge target at 100 yards. I was able to get him off just as fast as I could and keep all shots on that target at 100 yards. There's no question this muzzle device does work for as far as being a muzzle brake as well. The recoil here was absolutely minimal. The trigger was absolutely gorgeous on here. Uh, it, it, it just uh, functioned like a Swiss watch. Now, for as far as uh, quality is concerned, again, I believe it, it, it definitely is up there as a customized gun. It's a custom gun. It does have a lot of... Uh, really, really nice aspects to it. The one thing that was sort of impressive when I was talking to the uh, founder about was the way that they build them. Um, the way that they build in a lot of ways is very similar to that of a mil spec company. Mil spec company, meaning you have a technical data package where you have, for instance, you have your torque ratios for your, your uh, barrel nut. You do the 35 foot pounds, one, two, and on your third time you would do the indexing. They do all those things. They do the exact torque ratios on the, uh, on the, on the carrier keys, you know, all the, all those things that, uh, are done that give you that repeatability. They spend all that time to make sure that they do. So they understood, uh, you know, the details of, of doing things the same way every time. So you build a constant, uh, a constantly high quality product. So uh, I'm definitely th I'm grateful that uh, our viewer was, was able to send this win because again, I tried getting them. I wasn't really able to get a hold of them. Uh, and I was very, very impressed Again, I shot this rifle before I even went and talked to uh, the owner of the company, so I had no idea about the company at all before I shot the gun. Of course, he was pleased that, you know, uh, my valuation was flawless. I mean, it uh, again, it was sub-MOA, which was excellent for a gun like this, especially with a trigger like this. Or maybe I was just having a good day, but pretty much all my groups were under one. Some were a little bit over, but I definitely shot the Black Hills just a little bit better than did the 62 grain uh, OTM. Uh, the rifle was perfectly gassed, as you'll see. All the brass was heading around 4, four o'clock, 5 o'clock. So it was not overgassed at all. Um, unfortunately, I did not fire it suppressed because I don't have a Sandman suppressor. Uh, and again, being this was a viewer's gun, I wasn't going to take his muzzle device off and put mine on uh, to fire to fire suppressed. Um, hopefully at some point I'll be able to get another one of these from uh, Sons of Liberty uh, to do some of that kind of testing on. Those of you who are looking for some steel targets, uh, we these challenge targets we have, I've been using them for probably close to a year now. They really made my shooting a lot more uh, exciting and a lot more fun. Uh, we do have an excellent code to save you guys some money. So for SAS, you can save 10% on any steel target. So look those guys up. You can get yourself some really good steel targets. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you do, please click like, please subscribe, and even better, share.